All right, class, settle down. I'm <laughs> Professor Fux here. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is... Uh, Professor uh, Fux? Is your name Professor Fux because you give a fucks or you don't give a fucks? Uh, good question, both. Also, demerit! <laughs> Here's the rules of the class. You can say anything you want, and you can be as loud as you want. You just have to raise your hand first, uh, okay? Actually, you can't be as loud. Uh, uh, second demerit, but also <laughs> it's there's a noise curfew, so I can't be much louder than that. And I probably shouldn't be that loud in the first place. Um, see me after class for bonus homework. Um... <laughs> If you rack up enough demerits, I might have to force you to read Homestuck. Oh, no. I know. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. Get fucked. Uh, so, so uh, my name is Professor Simons. You can also call me Professor Chris. You can. I have my Homestuck in... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I have my degree in Homestuck, and I am a Homestuck myself. Homestuck fans are called Homestucks. Confusing? We're just getting started. Uh, and... I know. Oh, it goes deep. It goes deep, man. Uh, uh, so, again, oh. as you guys... Oh. Nice! <laughs> Minus one demerit. Nice fart. I hope we got that on mic. Uh, so, as you guys all probably know, Homestuck is now required reading for 8th graders. So, you guys all... <laughs> so, I know it's past your time, but uh, for the kids out there... They're going to be, they're going to need this. It's going to be on like the SATs and shit. It's going to determine how much school money their school gets because how well they do in Homestuck testing. Uh, I actually lobbied for that bill to be added to the California, to the California standardized testing. Wait, so is it real? Yeah, I added it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, 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 like I said, once I got my degree in Homestuck, I decided to add that. <laughs> I just tried to. D all right, all right. I, uh, yeah, I know. It's like being, getting a degree in taxes. You like Homestuck? Uh, it's boring, but it's important. And I, that's why I'm teaching this Homestuck remedial class, so y'all motherfuckers can understand what you missed out. Y yes, Jason. Thank you for raising your hand. Were the founding fathers Homestucks? No, because Betty Crocker wasn't born yet. That's a good question. <laughs> Oh, yes, absolutely. The question was, were the founding fathers homestucks? They would have been. Ben Franklin would have been a fucking homestuck, I tell you what. Um, other than that, I'm not quite sure. It fits his sense of humor perfectly. Uh, so, a lot of people, let's start off with an easy question. Uh, how many of you guys have read Homestuck? S tried to read Homestuck? Sam? Just Sam? Maddie? A little bit of Maddie? Like, part, tiny. What, what part did you read? What part did the you get to? The, just the first part. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Sam, do you remember what part you left off to? The Midnight Crew are great. Yeah. That's the best part. The Love the song. Liquid okay. Negrosity is what it's called. Oh, okay. Midnight Crew. I just... Okay, so... I know. So, P... Oh, fucking great song. Acapella version. Yes, Don. So, you said you're reading it. How's their song? Don's question is, if you're reading it, how are their songs? Good question. S Jason. How, Ace's question is, I ask you as a friend, have you ever been as happy as you are right now? <sighs> yes, but I don't remember it. My life's been pretty depressing lately, and uh, while I've been in classes, I've been taking notes on Homestuck for eight weeks. <laughs> and I am through one quarter of Homestuck. So that shows you how many lectures this is going to be. At least four. I'm going to try and make it three. Wait, it's probably going to be five. Part one. This is part one. <laughs> We're only covering year one of Homestuck. Uh oh Dude, uh, I'm and I'm pushing it, squeezing it into four parts, but I can make it happen. Isn't Homestuck one of the, the five longest pieces of like, literature in history? That is correct. It is out it done by. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. There for Homestuck. Done by a fucking Smash Bros. I love character. you, man. Yes. I knew that. I knew that. So okay, so the what the number one is uh, Smash Bros. fan fiction, which what? is currently going was was Wait, Jason. Uh, the Smash, the, it's recently been eclipsed by something else. I forget what it was exactly. Okay. But That's good to know. It is just a little over half of the Lord of the Rings trilogy for size. There's, a, a, by the way, a lot of Homestuck. To answer Don's question, what is Homestuck? It's a, it's a interactive stage play is how it plays out. But really, what it is, it's just a comic. You open up your little computer, and then you're like, Homestuck.com, and you type, actually, it's MSPA.com. They recently changed it to Homestuck.com, so it would be easier to find. Uh, big shakeup. 
uh, so you click on things and there's interactive flashes. Don't fall asleep in class. Demerit. Uh, I saw those eyes closing. Uh, okay. Well, because he's Asian. Uh, yes. Also, didn't raise your hand. Demerit. Uh, I. I'm gonna make you read Homestuck. You stay after class. Uh, so oh, taking notes. That's good. Hey. I reward good note taking. Here's a caramel candy apple. Oh Yo! Whoa. 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 Welcome to the best lecture on Homestuck. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I have his weed. Uh, <laughs> can I get some candy? Wait, I might have paper. Good question. No, demerit. Uh, so that's what you do. There's interact. It's got ho uh, animations. It's got music that corresponds with story events as supplemental material it's all created by fans there's a f there are multiple flash animated fan walk around games inside of homestuck it's kind of weird no phones in class usually but you're recording me so i'll give it uh, i'll allow it um actually that's a good idea nope you know what i gotta be stingy with those Wait, you gotta earn them uh you know what you are streaming this Thank you, you're welcome uh, and you, you want these for tomorrow, because after this, this is going away. I take this home with me. Um, so it's good to save up for the future, kids. So, what the, hey, no audio in class. Uh, so, uh, thank you. Say thank you, professor. Thank you, professor. Uh, that's good. <laughs> Minus one demerit. Can yes, Sam. May I yes, you may. Yes, you may. Uh, have any edibles you want r uh, right now, because it's oh, only going to get better. Chilling. Can nice. I Professor C? Yes, you can. And maybe uh, if I were to want to give a more casual tone to Professor C, I could maybe just say, like, like Big C. Like, hey, Big C. Uh, no demerit. That's a little – that, that kind of crosses the line. That's a little too casual. You, don't, you never want to be too casual with your students. Pro tip for teachers. Uh, go, don't, don't do things with your students. I'm not open to, to student-teacher relationships unless I meet the right girl. And she is of age. Go on. Yes, Jason. Uh, d yes, Don. Uh, question. My notes, okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, demerit. <laughs> uh, it would be funny if I gave you a demerit. Uh, so that's what Homestuck is. It's a bunch. It's like a mishmash multimedia project, and it's like a, a seven years old. Uh, I'm dressed as a character, John Egbert, who's the main c fucking character of this thing. Uh, yes, Sam. I've dressed like John Egbert before. That's true. Sam has also cosplayed as John Egbert, and I think you did it for your one of your ex-girlfriends. Yeah, it was for Halloween. Yes, it was for Halloween. Which is why I'm dressed. Look at my hair. I put I put product into this. Yeah. Um, so that's what Homestuck is. Uh, a, a little primer note. Uh, just run you through the timeline of Homestuck. To, uh, today in this lecture, we're going to be covering <coughs> the, the first pages of Homestuck. Yes, Don. That is true. I wrote these on binary paper because I was taking notes during class because I go to actual college outside the fiction of this lecture. Whoa, meta, like Homestuck. Uh, also, uh, Dante Bosco, if you're watching, I'm half Filipino. Hit me up. I love you, man. Uh, Dante Bosco is in Homestuck. We'll get to that later. Wait, Dante Bosco, the voice actor for Prince Zuko. The Fire Lord. Uh, Fire Lord Zuko, yes. But more importantly, American Dragon Jake Long. Yes, American Dragon Jake Long and Rufio in Hook, who makes <laughs> no less than three appearances in Homestuck. Th we have three different Rufios in Homestuck. It's going to be great. Uh, uh, it didn't. <laughs> No, it just it just didn't. You'll uh, it it'll come up. He like redraws over the characters. It's fun. Uh. It, people ask, how long is Homestuck? It's 8,124 pages of rich, Homestucky, Huss nasty goodness. The uh, car the creator is Andrew Hussey, and so he wants it. He declared in advance. He's like, whatever my style becomes, the same way things are described as <laughs> Shakespearean, I want my style to be known as Huss nasty. <laughs> There we go. So that's Andrew Hussey, everyone. He doesn't take himself too seriously. He made Sweet Bro and Hell Jeff, which Se Sam Seth is a fan of. We yes. We may get into this later, but was he the only writer for Homestuck? Yes, he is the only writer for Homestuck, and we will get into that later because you can imagine Homestuck like a rocket, right? Homestuck immediately has a series of going, whoa, oh, 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 oh. It gets higher and higher, and then it kind of like peaks 
at certain points, and then it falls down, and then it peaks again. It gets like another <laughs> boost, and then <laughs> and then it just kind of like cruises flat lines for a long time. Yes. And again, we might get into this later, but is he the only one who directly contributed to the source material itself? Like no one else ever did art? Or no, we had a lot of people do art. A lot of people who were better at drawing than Hussey himself. Hussey we had Fox Toby Fox. Music, right? Toby Fox did music, a lot of music that was featured very prominently in a comic. Little side, I was gonna get into this later, but we'll talk about it now. Undertale by Toby Fox. He, Toby Fox, lived with Andrew Hussey for a time. Homestuck was doing pretty well, and Toby Fox was like, hey, I'm on the music team, and we're really good friends in real life. Or, I mean, online. Could I live with you in real life? I, or I think Hussey offered. He was like, I need a place to live. And he was like, do you wanna live in my basement? And he said, sure. And Hussey is convinced that's why the game was called Undertale, because he made it in Andrew Hussey's basement. There you go. That's really cool, huh? That is really cool, right? And uh, you guys may know the song Megalovania, uh, the theme song for Sans. Yes. Uh, that song appeared first in the Radiation Halloween hack, but then it was remade and appeared in Homestuck before Undertale. Yeah, so that's that's it. It does. It is featured in Homestuck, by the way. It, there's like a, a animated panel that has it. It's fucking great. Um, so today we're going to cover Acts 1 through 4 and the intermission. You guys don't need to know what that is, but all you need to know is like Acts 1 through 4 is here. There's seven Acts in Homestuck. Here's Acts 1 through 4. It's like this. And like another half is like Acts 5. And you're like, oh, okay. And then the rest of it is Acts 6. So yeah, half of the comic is Acts 6. And Acts 7 is a 13-minute flash, I think. That's it. Yeah, that's weird. I know. I shouldn't have given you those candies. I feel like it's incentivizing you to check out early. Uh, oh, that leads me to my next topic. When do people fucking check out of Homestuck? Because every, uh, Homestuck is kind of like the Dark Souls of web comics. What? It's it's not. It's more like the James Joyce's Ulysses of web comics in that it's really long, makes no sense, and the author likes to fuck with you a lot. Uh, but that's what makes it cool. And. So, like, where do people check out of Homestuck? Mostly in this first part. Like, what we're going to cover today, people are like, oh, you should read Homestuck. And they try to get their friends in. And it they get, like, some of the way in. And then they're just, like, somewhere around here, like Sam and Maddie, they just kind of like, I have other things to do with my life. And then that happens. And then they just never go back to Homestuck. But I know there are some people who are like, oh, man, the first five times I tried to read Homestuck, couldn't give less than a shit. The sixth time, best thing of my life. And all of their profile pictures on Facebook just have them in gray face paint for the rest of their lives. Yes, Jason. So does that make Homestuck the Dark Souls of webcomics? Yes. <laughs> I said that, and you'd, be, you'd understand if you weren't playing on your fucking phone. Oh, Demerit. You get too many demerits, I'm going to hit you with this boat horn. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so, we literally can't do this, but I still will threaten you. This is a boat horn. I couldn't afford a klaxon. So, if you get too many demerits, I will hit you with this boat horn. By the way, I tested this in the store, and it hurt my ears so bad, I dropped it physically. This is supposed to, this is, will signal a boat from 40 meters away. I didn't buy it. I found it from the Elk Grove Reuse Center. They recycle things. Oh, yeah, it was very good. Eco-friendly. Uh, every household gets 10 a month, so you guys can find out there. A little Elk Grove trivia, Sacramento trivia. Yeah. Don, question? Uh, it, somebody has to, 10 items. Some people have to donate the boat horn for you to take it. I will fucking use that boat horn on you, so be careful. Yes, it's exactly like the Animal Crossing uh, license, but it's real, yeah. and people donate. Yeah, the oh, waste. You, do you, it's the waste recycling center. It's great, but nobody cares about that if you're watching this in the future. So I'm gonna tell you about Homestuck. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so it starts. Uh, oh, do you have a question, Maddie? No. Oh, okay. So it starts with a little boy, who looks very familiar to this motherfucker, which I am dressed as. Look at this. I'm wearing shorts and everything. Oh, I forgot the black belt. Never mind. I, let's just say I'm wearing it. It's canon. Uh, this little guy named John Egbert. Ah, oh, 
You like this? You like this interactive thing? No fucking PowerPoints. I went off the grid. Analog. Yes, thank you. That's the word. Um, uh, and it's just John. And so what does John do? He, uh, he fucks around for a long time. All right, so this is the thing you need to know about Homestuck. Homestuck, when it was being written, for the first year of its life, so what we're going to cover today, people would post onto the official Homestuck forums like suggestions for what the characters would do next. And then he'd fucking pick the funniest ones and then just draw them. I think I've covered that a little bit talking to you guys. Uh, so for the, uh, what does he do? He plays around with his room and he fucks around. But who is John? And why do we give care about this 12 year old fuck boy? I'm turning my back to the audience. That's not good. Um, all right. So here, remember when you were 12 and I, I, I know for, to put yourself in the mind of all these characters, I know the, ugh. But people who read Homestuck are 12, so we got to go there. It's true. Uh, and, and, and once it gets a grip of you, it just provides you a high you'll never be able to live down for the rest of your life. And that's why I'm giving this talk. Um, so remember when you were 12, you liked weird movies that, like, looking back, were, like, objectionab objectively bad, but you still have that crazy nostalgia for them. And uh, you know how, like at least for me, you kind of were or you knew a kid who was, like, super oblivious to everything. Kind of like the kid where, like, if you just told him something, he'd be like, huh, wait, is that real? Like that. That's who John is. He's kind of a ditz, kind of an idiot. He's He has buck teeth, and he likes terrible movies that nobody likes. One of his favorite movies is Mac and Me. One of his favorite movies is Armageddon. He likes knockoff E.T. Not even good E.T. I, he, he talks about monsters in the closet with Howie Mandel. This guy likes shit movies, and not just like any shit movies. He likes weird, quirky movies. Ghostbusters 2 is his favorite movie of all time. Nice farts. Uh, plus one demerit. Yeah, I'll give you that. Merit. Yeah, plus one merit. There you go. Minus one demerit. Uh, also, John's, uh, 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 he's also the kind of friend who's like, hey, magic's cool. Pranks are cool. I like praying pranks. Uh, so we'll do that. Uh, John's goal in life is to become a master prankster, which is, you may think that, oh, that's dumb because he's a 12-year-old kid. This is literally his life's calling. His dad works at a joke shop. They throw pies at each other for fun. This is, it's, it's serious business. It's not a joke. Don't laugh. It's no funny business. It's no funny bit. Aha. Uh -huh. business is no funny business. That's true, but you didn't raise your hand to merit. Uh... <laughs> All right, so that's John. And so what does John do in his room? John fucks around. So like, like I said, he just starts messing around. Uh, oh, by the way, here's, here's something they never fucking cover, and it's one of the most confusing parts of Homestuck right off the bat. Homestuck takes place on Earth. Earth. But it takes place in a universe where we recently discovered this crazy new technology that's very video gamey, and it has made backpacks obsolete. Let me take two steps back. Okay, so real quick, they, they've created a real life inventory system. They just figured out code to the point where it can store like digital matter, the same way you can scan somebody's brain, you can store physical matter as digital data. So basically they create an inventory system where you could just be you're like, oh, I wanna pick up this microphone and you store it on like, like a chip in your pocket. It's amazing, Jason. Uh, they never explain it. It's just kind of assumed because it's kind of like a funny video gamey thing. Like, it's right at the yeah, it's right at the beginning. So you see him interacting with his inventory system. And you're like, oh, it's an inventory system. Oh, that's wacky. And then they keep interacting with it, and other people do. And you're just like, wait, this is just a thing. This is just a thing. I'm breaking it down for y'all who have never read Homestuck before. I know. It's wacky. We get into it. Uh. All right. So you can have a huge, basically unlimited amount of items stored in like your smartphone and it weighs almost nothing. Backpacks are obsolete. That's great. Everybody uses it. It's very great. It's very handy. Even your grandma can use it. And it functio functions identical to an inventory system in a video game. But we can't let kids have it because that's a lot of power to give like a 12 year old. So the compromise is we'll make them educational. We'll base them off of like archaic programming systems because Andrew Hussey has a degree in computer science. Uh, so it's, they're more difficult for kids to interact with, but that leads to some hilarious physical comedy later. And it 
just it will teach them programming none of that makes sense but whatever anyway john's turning 13 that's that's where the story charts you meet him on his 13th birthday you name him and what do you, what does a kid want to do on his birthday go to school i was gonna kick something but i, I that's too much effort fuck no he wants to stay home and play video games with his best friends who are all on the internet because he's kind of a no life jason you know how old the author was at this time 32 34 yeah, so he was an old motherfucker in internet terms. He's, the chat client in this game is based on, like, AIM Instant Messenger. Wow, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Very, Very interesting. interesting. Yeah, a lot of people are freaked out when they're just like, oh, man, I love Homestuck. How old is Andrew Hussey? 40. <laughs> what? He's 40, He's 40 now. Wow. Yeah, I know, because they're, they're like, I'm 12. Yeah. What? 40? God. It's okay. He's a millionaire. Um... Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, there was a point in Homestuck's development where Homestuck was receiving so much traffic every day, millions every day, and he has ads on his website, and people were like, how much money are you making? He's like, I won't disclose it, but I'm, I'm living pretty comfortably, and I'm doing pretty well, which is, uh, humble internet guy speak for, I make so much fucking money. Uh, but, you know, that's, that makes sense. Yep. Raise like, do you know how much money? At $2.4 million. Are we going to get it today? Uh, no, we're not, but that's good. It's, it's come out, right? Uh, it has. It came out last year. Yeah, after how long? Uh, six years of development hell. <laughs> so that's that's a whole other game, video gamey thing I can get into later. Um, uh, but you'll have to know what Homestuck is at that point. It was kind of a natural progression. Oh, Homestuck is like an adventure game that you play where the computer is an actual person. And uh, so a Homestuck adventure game would be great. And then the guys who made King's Quest, like the developers stole all of their money. That's a whole other thing. There was a lawsuit involved, which was even more expensive. Um, and then they released a video game that their current company can't profit off of because it was a Kickstarter game. So they were just like, the only people who are going to buy this game are new people entering the fandom. So how are we going to fund? That's a whole other thing. Anyway, John's turning 13. <laughs> and as John's turning 13, he wants to play g video games with his friends. Uh, there's like no info about this game. It's called Sburb, like suburb. It's Sburb, S apostrophe burb, S burb. Uh, people pronounce this a bunch of different ways. Uh, it plays like The Sims. It's a, by a new company no one ever heard of. They're the same company that invented the real-life inventory systems. Oh. Yeah, Suburb. That's uh, a Suburb. Yes. Uh, it's S-B-U-R-B. I'd write it on the whiteboard, but that's lame. Anyway. Uh, uh, what does John like? John likes old movies. John wants to be a prankster. Magic is pretty cool. He's like a goofy dork. And it, he's kind of oblivious. And people love him, and he's much like me, except I talk a lot. Um, oh, John hates, John hates cake. Funnily enough, because I'm gluten-free, uh, he also hates cake, and he lives next to a Betty, Betty Crocker facility. So it, it's, and his dad, for some undisclosed reason, just loves baking cake. And so he'll run out every day and just buy cake mixes just so he can create pies and cakes to throw at his son because he loves him. There's a lot of fighting your family's love in Homestuck. That's a big theme. Uh, 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 amateur program. Uh, uh, oh. oh, yeah, he likes Fruit Gushers, which is weird. We'll get into that later. Fruit Gushers are made by the Betty Crocker Corporation. It causes John to have a literal crisis of faith later. That was, that's going to be great. Uh, yeah, question? Really? Yeah. yeah, it is. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, so, like, his whole arc is like, man, I hate Betty Crocker, but I love Gushers. That's great. He kind of, like, doesn't see that, like, connection until it's too late. Wait, what does that mean? That's ominous. I know. Homestuck is ominous as fuck, man. I love it. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, John is kind of, like, a bland protagonist, but, like, a lot of protagonists are, and, like... He doesn't have a personality because he's a 12-year-old. And 12-year-olds don't have personality. They just mimic people who are cooler than them and they pretend to have one. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
This is easily the most boring lecture. Anyway, his friend calls him, and he's like, dude, we gotta play this game called Homestuck. Only he doesn't call him, he messages him. And by reading these ch text message boxes, you read Homestuck. And so his friend Dave is like, oh, dude, we got to play this game together. It's super cool. And he's like, yeah, we got to play this game together. John's kind of a dork. Uh, let's, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, they talk about bullshit. They reference the movie Armageddon with Bruce Willis in 1998. That's going to have huge plot ramifications later. Because the whole, I, dude, the whole world is about to get Armageddon. You see how, like, I've got two things here? One that says Earth and the other that says Dead? That comes into play. Uh, so John checks his mailbox, but his dad beats him to it. And a very real kind of thing, if you've ever lived in a house that has stairs, he has to, like, quietly creep outside his room and go downstairs because he doesn't want to socially interact with his dad on his birthday because he's 12. Uh, John checks his mail. Uh, he, he, Dave convinces him, oh, you need to find a weapon to use. And he's like, oh, cool. The, another game abstract thing is like, you have to grab a weapon. And if you have a weapon, it makes you only able to use that weapon, but you're really good at using it. It makes no sense. But basically, you could choose whatever you want. And he's like, oh, cool. I'll pick a hammer. And I'll like be a hammer dude. I'll fight with hammers. And he's like, I, I, uh, I, I'm like a hammer guy now. And Dave's like, that's really fucking gay. That's, you, you pick like a dumb weapon. Eh, they're 12. And uh, the John fucks around downstairs. None of that matters. Uh, Harlequins. Uh, there's Harlequins. John is a John's dad is obsessed with Harlequins. And cakes. And cakes. John's dad is obsessed with three things: Harlequins, cakes, shaving cream. We'll get into that later. Not in a sexual way. He just likes to shave. He's a dad. Uh, also, there's a bunch of stuff I'm skipping over. You right now writing like the m m m like paragraph long comment of being like, oh my God, you're skipping out the best parts of Homestuck. No wonder your audience is falling asleep. Well, first of all, fuck you. <laughs> Second of all, it's, it's like I, I'm skipping over stuff to make it as entertaining as possible for people who've never read Homestuck before. And I'm not doing a great job of that, but um, I'm doing my best here. And if I'm skipping things, that's fine. And Homestuck itself is kind of like a puzzle. There's a bunch of small things I'm skipping over that have massive ramifications throughout the other parts of the comic because Andrew Hussey is literally a fucking genius. When it comes to like when you watch a movie or something and there's like a little like, oh yeah, there's a little reference there. And it's like, oh yeah, th that thing says 413. And it comes up later like a Stanley Kubrick door room in The Shining. He's like, oh, that came up later. Wow, that had massive ramifications. I had no idea. He does that with every single detail in all of Act 1. It's The guy is fucking amazing. Also, here's a great question. Do I even learn Homestuck? Do I even, like, care? Well, that's true. Well, that's true. Is it actually on the MCU? <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, I, I put it there, obviously. Thank you. Well, I didn't put it there. I lobbied for it. Anyway. It, it's ho talked about... Yes, Jason. How much of all of this, like, every detail has insane ramifications? How much of Homestuck do you think or know was planned from the start? How much of it was just like kind of cobbled together? How much of Homestuck was planned for the start? There, Andrew Hussey is a fan of planning things years in advance, and at the same time, he wrote all of Homestuck by the seat of his pants, and that is very obvious. I know that kind of sounds like a paradox. It is true. And it, that becomes more and more apparent the closer he gets to writing an ending because he's kind of like flying and building the railroad tracks. He's like, I don't know. There's a great quote from Andrew Hussey specifically where he's somebody asked, what's the biggest mistake you made writing Homestuck? This is after the comics finished. And he's like, oh, boy, that's kind of like asking what was the greatest potato chips you, you've ever eaten? Right. Does it do you eat one potato chip and you decide that's it? That was the best potato chip of my entire life. Or that was the biggest mistake of my entire life? Or do you just kind of go, do they all kind of blend together into like a pot of mistakes or just like a long series of all of the potato chips you've ever eaten? Uh, and then he goes to talk about his potato chip, favorite potato chip he ate during the Super Bowl. And he totally dodges that question <laughs> in a very hussy fashion. So the answer is a lot of mistakes and he's aware of it. And also some things are planned out amazingly far in advance. Uh, like Armageddon. They talk about Armageddon. Uh, giant meteors are about to kill everyone on Earth. 
that's what's about to happen. Uh, why learn Homestuck? Uh, it won't let me rest, so why should it let you rest? So I, it's important to learn. It's an incredible piece of media. It's really long, and I'll never shut up about it. So just, it's just good to learn. Uh, it, but it's a lot to ask for have somebody read Homestuck. So I'll just go through it as fast as I can. Homestuck 101. Uh, 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 lots of characters. Time shit. Oh my god, there's so much time shit. Oh my god. There, there's just learning times. Oh my god, there's the afterlife. Fun fact in Homestuck, they, they kill everybody, but at one point they just lose so many characters. They're like, oh shit, we don't have enough material to like write characters. Well, I guess I could write about who characters are and really go into that. You got to go, Don? No, I was just wondering uh, if there was like a charger. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, go ahead and find one. Uh, yeah. Plus two demerits. Uh, okay, so at one point, he kills off all the characters in Homestuck. Not all the characters. You'll get to it. Uh, but he's... Yeah. Okay. But he kind of doesn't... He runs out of material, so he's like, oh, shit. I guess I'll create an afterlife. And then he does, but because he's Andrew Hussey, he's like, oh, man, I could kill them off again in the afterlife. That'd be pretty funny, right? And then he does. Uh, so I, this says dead. I also have, on a different piece of paper, I have one that says double dead. So we can double keep track of who's dead. And that's not going into all of the different hundred versions of each character there are. I wish I was joking about that. John goes to the kitchen to fight his dad. And they have, like, familial strife. It's like a little animation where you can pick commands for him to do. And his dad throws pies at him. Go ahead. Is there a fail state? Can you fail this minigame? There is... The fail state is not to play. Uh, there's no fail state for this minigame. So it is no, linear. There's no possibility of a branching timeline. Uh, funny you mentioned branching timelines. <laughs> but no, there's no branching timeline. Okay. Um, yeah, you just win the minigame, uh, and you, you win, and John throws smoke pellets on the ground, and his dad, it doesn't distract his dad, but he's just like, oh no, and he like takes a broom, and he like swats away from the smoke detector, and that gives John enough time to like steal the video game his dad got from the mail. That's why he's there. Uh, he does more shit. He breaks shit. Anyway, he opens the package. It's a birthday gift from Dave, the guy he was just talking to, and he pulls out a bunny, and it's the bunny from Con Air. John's favorite movie of all time. That's not Armageddon, 1998. Uh, and Conair, actually a great movie, only famous because of Homestuck. Did it really well in China? I don't know. Nick Cage, right? It's got Nick Cage! Uh, and he fucking, yo. I may or may not just be wearing a Nick Cage wife beater right now because of Conair. If I had more time, I would rip off my shirt and then go into Conair. Actually, cheer for me as I get naked. Yay. Ugh. Too hot to handle uh, and too bold to hold. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, uh, so, so he, uh, he, it's also included a certificate of authenticity that says, this is not just a bunny from Con Air. This is the actual bunny rubbed in Nick Cage's stupid, greasy hands and caressed against Cyrus the Virus's uh, pistol in the movie. Yo, I know so much about this shit. Go on. So Nicolas Cage is canon. Nicolas Cage is canon in Homestuck. Uh, they actually gave him his own superpowers where he is called the Nick of Time. And we'll get into that later. Each home character in Homestuck eventually gets superpowers. God, this just sounds like nothing when I say <laughs> it. This is just like the most asinine... I just sound like a crazy person. <laughs> oh my god. It could be both, and it is. <laughs> it is kind of the appeal. Uh, okay, so uh, he connects with his other friend who's named Rose. Oh! God, I forgot to put up Dave! Shit! That's Rose. Rose is purple. That's it. Oh, absolutely. Yo, I. Fun fact. Fun fact, my printer only prints in black, uh, my printer only prints in black and white, so I had to print these out, color them in with colored pencil, <laughs> and then laminate them. That's Rose. Yeah, that's Rose. And, oh, and this is Dave. 
But that's kind of the appeal of Homestuck. It's kind of shitty and cobbled together at the last minute, but it's also beautiful and serene, uh, unlike this presentation. But I thought it would be a good homage. Uh, sorry, did you get that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dave is cool. He's got sunglasses. Uh, this is Rose. Rose is purple, and she likes to psychoanalyze her friends. Dave is like the cool, the kid in school who pretends to be too cool, and Rose is like the, the pretentious kid that we all were at some point. We're just like, I've read Sigmund Freud. I know what all of you guys are thinking right now. I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm smart upstairs. Yeah. Uh, that's Rose, and she's kind of great. Uh, uh, let me talk about Rose real fast. Oh, my God. I'm just throwing my notes everywhere. It's great. Uh, let's see. Rose. Yeah. Rose is like the dark, smart, psychological side of your 12-year-old self. This is the part of you who was into uh, a, a wizard fantasy. Uh, this is the person, part of you that wrote shitty fan fiction. You were interested in dark, gritty literature. Yes. So you never really talk about home. You talk about Homestuck many times over the Yeah. Time. But so is every main character just kind of like a persona that a 12 year old wants to be for a week? And then that's kind of why it resonates? Kind of. Like, again, all of these people are versions of the same 12 year old that I guess Andrew Hussey was at some point. Uh, also, thank you. You're the only person who's actually asking questions. So it's time to burst out one of these. Yeah, are these vegan? They are. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're also gluten-free. Wow. I, I think it says so on the box. That's good. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, H.P. Lovecraft, Cthulhu, uh, Freudian psychology. That's Rose. Dave? Uh, he's like an oxymoron. He's like... Man, I'm cool, even though I don't actually know what cool is, but fucking not knowing what cool is, but passing it off as cool, that's what real cool is. So I am cool. That was a fucking shitty description. He likes things that are ironic. Uh, he also is dabbles in programming, and he likes uh, making sick turntables. That's nice. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, ugh. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is perfect. Uh, oh, no, I wish I didn't say that into the mic. That's a sound clip now. It's out there. So Rose starts playing The Sims with John's house. She can like see in John's house. It's like if a camera was up there in the corner of the room and she can like see John's house, but also can use her mouse to physically manipulate her house. So like she can pick up and like move his furniture. But it actually moves his furniture in real life. It's kind of weird. Yes. Is playing She's playing Spurb. It just operates like The Sims. I use The Sims as a metaphor to understand. Sam is fighting to keep his eyes open, and I appreciate that. He's a little sleepy stoned. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, you need two people to play this game. Why am I talking about any of this? All right. Talk about the plot. Talk about the plot. Uh... We meet Rose. Uh, uh, they start fucking around. There's a lot of fucking around. Uh, something about fruit by the foot. What the fuck is did I write in my notes? <laughs> All right. So, Spurb is a video game that can alter reality. Why? Because Spurb created reality. Yo, let's get into the dark lore of Homestuck. Uh, there's nothing to sit on. I, I've destroyed my only chair by filling it up with useless objects. Oh, that's true. No, not that desk. Not that desk. <laughs> uh, so, the, I'll just talk about Homestuck. So, the way they created... So, Spurb is, fun fact, not just a video game. It's a video game that creates universes. Oh, shit. What created this universe that we're in right now? A video game. Uh, what created the universe that created our universe? A video game. It is the same video game. It's Spurb. Every uh, society, every universe eventually develops sentience to the point where they can create a new universe. And uh, it's a self-perpetuating -percep cycle. Yes? Kind of like that Rick and Morty episode? Yes, like the tiny verse episode of Rick and Morty, uh, where each universe creates a universe inside of itself. That's literally it. That's universes creating other universes. Um, 
But for what new universe to begin, that also means there's a hard time limit on when the universe and sentient life in it ends, which is today, John's birthday. He turns 13. Um, uh, so, so that's what Spurb is. We'll get into more bits of that. Uh, Rose disconnects. There, so Rose, uh, John un li lives in a house in a suburb. He's a normal boy. He does normal boy things. Rose lives in a fucking forest in like a mansion. Here's the thing about all of these characters, like much, when you have internet friends, they're just all like, oh man, it's cool. Like your life is like mine, right? And they're like, yeah, sure. Rose lives in a fucking mansion. She has no idea. She, there's trees around for miles. And she's like, that's normal. Also, none of them go to school. That's another thing. That's, that's, and they never explain why. Like somebody asked Hussey once and he's like, uh, why don't any of the kids attend school? They're too cool for school. Mm -hmm. ah. Also, they're too fictional. Yeah. That is the canonical answer. They just don't go to school. Apparently, once they invented technology that was good enough to digitize physical matter, they were just like, ah, fuck it. What do you really need to learn at school? Uh, so just teach yourself programming, you dumb kids. Uh, and, that's, and that's it. Oh, okay. So, uh, listen. There's a lot going to be a lot of. I'm just going to throw information out at, at, at you guys. There's going to be a lot. Uh, uh, Rose disconnects. She's literally picking up John's bathtub. Oh, there's a thing where she's like, what else can I mess with? And so she clicks on his toilet and then rips it out of the cement. And she's like, oh, fuck. Uh, I could I could fix this. And she just like puts it back down and there's water spilling everywhere. And she's like, that's fine. Yes. So every universe that has been created is in fact just a game session of Spurb. Yep. So them playing Spurbs lets them interact with their universe as if they were at the helm of Spurb. We'll get into it. Okay. I'm I'm so shocked you're actually taking this information. You're just like, oh man, that's great. You know what? Plus ten demerits. I'm gonna make you read Homestuck for good. <laughs> uh, as a good thing instead of a punishment. <laughs> Seth. Besides people fucking around? Yeah, because I, I, I don't know. Like, the, the Stuart Little talk was, like, such a sequence of events. And I feel like we've only talked about, like, ideas and concepts. That's so true. Far. The ideas and the concepts are where people get, like, lost and confused. But I, I will... Okay, so, yeah, let me, let me give you, like, an overview. Maddie. Did you make the, the wood? Sh yeah. Uh, Did you made all the stuff while I was here? Oh, okay, yeah. All right, so uh, let me... Yeah, informally, let's just go down. Oh, also, uh, Rose puts a bunch of game shit around John's house, and one of them is a countdown of four minutes and 13 seconds. Ah, until something happens, and it's ominous, and we don't know what's going on. But let me just, let me just take a second here. Let me just fill in this board. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about these characters as I hook them up. All right. Uh, the, the uh, fucking, oh, yeah, this is John's dad. He's a... He's a very nice guy. He has no eyes for some reason, uh, but he has a fatherly fedora, not that kind of fedora. This is before those those kinds of fedoras showed up. Uh, and he's got a tie. He's cool and he lives on Earth. Yeah, there we go. This is Rose's mom. Uh, uh, she's a scientist. She's very cool, very sexy, and an alcoholic, as you can see by this martini. Uh, her alcoholism is destroying Rose's life, but it's not a problem. Uh, this is... Jane's dad? We haven't covered this. This is Jane's grandpa. He has like a mustache. He invented the the company that created all of these great video game shit. Uh, he's there. He's also technically dead. We'll get into that later. So is he God? No, he's... Uh, it's funny you ask that. This is God. <laughs> oh. Yeah. This, see this dog right here? This is God. Also, it's Jade's pet. They hang out together. Uh, no, his name is uh, Beck, like B E C. Um, yeah. And he's like fully sen sentient and like understands that he's God, right? Oh no, he's not sentient. He's a fucking dog. This is not Stuart Little. Get out of here. But how is he God? Is because he's his dog. Uh, he is the guardian of this universe. So he is just here to watch over Earth and protect it until it eventually gets destroyed. Which is today. That's not a lot of, that's not protecting anything. He just has to die, right? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, demerit. Uh, <laughs> but it, you got to protect it before it falls apart. You don't want it to fall apart too early because this is a thing about Spurb. Spurb's goal is to create a new universe, right? Mm -hmm. If the universe ends before you have a chance to create a new one, what's the point? It, it's, no, it's not a self-perpetuating cycle anymore. Does that make sense? Yes, uh, universes have a biological urge to reproduce themselves uh, because universes are actually frogs. Go on. So is every universe the same then? Uh, fun fact, no. It, every universe develops some form of sentient life. We don't really have control over what that is. They just like ev uh, cr uh, evolve from something. So like uh, here we evolve from apes and the universe that created us, they evolve from bugs. It's just weird shit like that. So, but eventually, sentient life will be created. It will become advanced enough to create computer technology and then eventually create the video game's burb and then create a new universe. Don. When do the grave trolls eventually happen? Unfortunately, we're not going to get to them today. I know. Uh, do you want me to explain the trolls real quick? What questions do you have about trolls? I'll answer all of them. That's yeah. true. Oh, oh yeah. Like yeah, go ahead, Maddie. The thing with the rest. Oh, this? Yeah. Th I can't believe I didn't even talk about this. This is the feelometer. So, uh, unlike Homestuck, which is kind of gives you conflicting emotions at all times, uh, that forces you to grapple. There's a lot of like conflicting feelings. You don't want something that's tell that makes you confused about how to feel. So I did it for you. This is a very simple chart that says, oh, things are good. And like, oh, sweet, a new page. This is the MSPA reader. This is a panel. So now you know that things are going good. But since John is about to be killed, oh, <laughs> we're in the danger zone. Oh. Uh, so that's, that's what you guys should be feeling. Oh, no. You a I did. This is, a, this is a pony. Rose, when Rose fights with her mom, because this is what happens, Rose disconnects. There's a power outage at her house in the forest. And so she goes downstairs, and now she has to interact with her mom, uh, who, like I said, is a crazy alcoholic and also, like, really agile. That's a whole other thing. They, they get into a fight where Rose's mom, ironically, just tries to give a bunch of gifts to Rose to show that she loves her. And, uh, but Rose understands this is a passive-aggressive gesture from her mother pretending to be a good housewife mom it it's very strange like her mom will do things like oh look i'm cleaning i'm a good mom but the vacuum isn't plugged in so it's all for show I, it's it's just insane uh and one of the things she does is she buys a pony for her daughter that she didn't ask for so that she can show how much of a good mom she is and that's that pony becomes Actually, not important later. Probably didn't deserve its own thing, but I, it was fun to talk about. <laughs> and listen, this Velcro is really sticky. Like, once I stuck it on, I was it was too firm to get off. So I was like, well, the pony's going up there. Uh, d uh, d fucking, uh, this is Dave. Dave was raised by his brother. And Dave uh, is kind of living in, like, like a 13-year-old's dream he's like oh man i don't have lame parents i don't have to go to school i get to live in texas in an apartment building with my cool older older brother it's every 12 year old's dream and then like you slowly find out that his life is like fucked up in weird ways like dave's bro doesn't have a job and so you're like dad john's dad works at like a joke shop rose's mom is a scientist uh, this guy's a millionaire. Uh, Dave's bro doesn't have a job? And he's like, no, no, no. He has a totally legit job. He's running a puppet porn empire. And you're just like, what? what? He's like, no, no, no. He doesn't like puppet porn. He's doing it ironically. I was like, what? And he's like, yeah. The, he's, he's just appealing to the market of puppet porn lovers out there, which he also created. But for ironic purposes, so it's fine. Uh, he eventually created chatbots that just flooded the internet with ads for puppet porn. So people invested in puppet porn. So he created a self-perpetuating cycle. Wait, so is of pu is puppet porn really nice? Because uh, it is because of him. Yes. Go on. So I, I'm very curious. What year was this? Like, 2008. Real life? real life year. This is 2008 and also in 
game, it's 2008. Wow. Uh, it, it actually premiered in 2009. Obama is known as the Homestuck president because the entirety of Homestuck took place inside of Obama's term. You knew that, Matty! Ooh, bonus points! Somebody gets fucking candy. Yo! You could have not known that and just said I know that and I throw candy at you for no reason. I realize now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah! Fucking, you wanna mess with me? I forget how terrifying it is. Like, I'm sure once I do it, I will actually be scared. Yes. Okay, yes. Oh, it's like 11. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, so so Dave doesn't want to admit that his brother single created, like, very creatively created a porn market for himself so he can keep making puppet porn. He doesn't really get that. Also, Dave doesn't eat food regularly. <laughs> he, he's kind of like, like, um, everybody's like, oh, yeah, my older brother's bad at cooking. And it's like, haha, he doesn't really make food. And, and people are like, oh, my older brother's like that, too. Uh, but Dave's older brother kind of starves him. Like, the refrigerator has, like, weapons and super soakers in it instead of food. The, like, like, he just goes to the refrigerator at one point, and he, like, he tries the ice machine to get a drink, and cherry bombs come out. And he's like, ah, of course, if you want food here, you have to hide it. I just live with my cool older brother. Denial. He doesn't get it. Uh, also, his bro has this, like, fucking puppet he just carries around everywhere and uh this guy little cow yeah and he, he just moves this puppet around as like a joke and like he'll he'll get constantly like gaslight dave so just trust me on this dave's brother can move at the speed of sound just trust me on this so what he'll do is like out of the corner of dave's eye he'll just like place the puppet somewhere so when Dave turns around the puppet has moved in the room and he'll just be like oh hey what's going on also he doesn't interact with him directly he just leaves like n threatening notes pretending to be Jigsaw from the Saw franchise does this sound crazy enough to you I feel crazy saying this I yeah okay thank you to confirm this is not the insane ramblings of one human being which, believe me, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, did I imagine Homestuck? <laughs> this is not, this can't be real. Uh, so, that's Dave's bro. He's shitty and uh, kind of abusive. Oh, I forgot. Uh, everybody's like, everybody has, like, fights with their parents, right? They all talk about fights. And Dave's like, yeah, I'm, th uh, John's like, I'm throwing pies at my dad and he's throwing pies at me. Uh... And Rose is like, oh, man, my, my mom keeps showering me with affection. I hate it. And uh, Dave's like, oh, yeah, I get into fights with my older brother. And, like, his older brother just beats the shit out of him. Not in, like, like in a traditional abusive way. Like, he doesn't get drunk and beat the shit out of him. But he just leaves notes that it, uh, or steals Dave's stuff until he goes to the rooftop of their apartment. And then they both take out katanas and then they'll he'll they'll just like ninja train and like literally fight each other dave can also move close to the speed of sound because he's been raised by a maniac there's no explanation for any of this it's it's just insane uh so dave is traumatized but he doesn't realize it uh and he may he dave canonically makes sweet bro and hella jeff which Fucking, I also have Velcro for. What? So Dave canonically makes the greatest web comics of all time. A my little brother Anthony has met somebody in real life who thinks Dave Strider and not Andrew Hussey is like the creator of Super Bro and Hell Jeff. It's pretty funny. Uh, anyway. Yeah, it is weird. Uh, this is Jade. We don't see her until five acts from now, and it's terrible. Uh, uh, fuck it. What, what is happening in Homestuck? Where are we? Where is everyone? Say what? The oh, the world ends. Right. John does game shit. Uh, he fucking escapes into the medium. And now we're gonna have to talk about that. But uh, what happens is he basically runs around his house 
there's like a glowing orb thing that like pulsates blue and he's like i don't know what's happening he throws a gesture into it it turns into a gesture don't ask just turn your brain off when you think of homestuck i'm, I'm gonna have an aneurysm don can you hand me that water please yes jason Absolutely. <laughs> it's not uh, the, my ha giddiness at the beginning was not because I'm excited to talk about it. It's because I get to fucking sleep at night. It's because <laughs> Homestuck will let my soul rest. I, was I gonna throw this at you? What am I fucking doing? Yeah, I was. <laughs> nah, you gotta earn it. Uh, <laughs> Kogo, thank you. I'm so glad. Uh, so. John runs up to his house. Uh, it creates a tree that bears fruit of an apple. Just trust me on this. He bites the apple and it teleports. This is the important part. It teleports him from Earth. Oh, it's the first time we get to move. Oh, interactive lecture. Patty, do you want to move this? Seth, move this. Yeah. Yeah, you fucking do. Move John from here onto Loas. And I'm going to explain what that is. Whoa! There you go. Coco, thank you, chat. Nice. Hi, Coco. Uh, and future people you watching like this. Uh, oh, okay, that one? Yeah. Yes. So, John and his house and his dad are now teleported to Loas. So, Jason, to answer your earlier question, how are universes created? You have to enter the game session. So you have to leave your universe and go to a place called the game session where it's like, like a holding room. It's like the world of the game that will create a new universe. So you have to go from your universe into the game session because your universe is ending. You're getting Armageddon. A rock the size of Texas is about to hit you. That's a reference to Armageddon. And you have to go into this place, the game session. Hi, Coco. Uh to create your own universe and it's called loas because each of these planets is called land of blank and blank so uh this is the land of wind and shade it's like a cloudy planet Ooh, uh this is the land of light and rain it's like a ocean white light planet ah this is the land of heat and clockwork low hack this is the land of frogs and Frost. Lofaf, go on. Do they retroactively apply an acronym to Earth? No. Ah, that would have been sick. That would have been sick. Yeah. Uh, why didn't you think of that, hussy? <laughs> uh, but it's cool. And uh, this gets parodied in the comic because they literally have a planet later that's just called Low Shit. And it doesn't stand for anything. It's just Low Shit. Uh, that's great. <laughs> um, so John is here. He doesn't see anything. His house is like on a pillar that just stretches below the clouds and there's clouds above. He's just in a gray fog and he's like, I don't know what the fuck's happening. I don't know why my house is here. What happened to my dad? My dad has disappeared. Uh, oh yeah. Boom. We don't know where his dad is. And so he's just kind of like, I, I don't, I don't know what's going on and I don't have anyone to talk to, but Rose is there. Rose is like, Hey, uh, I got my internet back on. Don't worry. I'm here to help you. Let me just pick up your dad's car, which has the video game, so we can get here. I'm sure nothing's going to go wrong. Rose is holding the car over the abyss, and then she disconnects. Like, her power gets lost again, and the car plummets through the abyss. That becomes important later. That's the only reason I'm bringing it up. So, John is, like, in a nightmare dimension, and he's and he can hear small monsters crawling around his house. And John being oblivious, they get to play out, like, the the trope of, like, oh, there's monsters in his house, but he doesn't see anything. So, like, there will be, like, footprints heading up his stairs and, like, uh, it, like it, posters torn off the walls. And he's like, hmm, I didn't do that. Something's wrong here, but I can't put my finger on it. And it's, like, heavily implied there's, like, one of these imp things, scary evil, hiding under his bed. And he's, he just doesn't realize it. So then he talks to Dave. He's like, hey, uh, Dave, you're not going to believe me, but I played that video game 
I almost died. There was a meteor about to hit my house, and now I'm in a nightmare dimension. And Dave's like, yeah, I buy it. And it, Dave, Dave just straight up believes him. And he's like, I think there might be a monster in my house. And then, uh, and then he's like, what? There's a monster in your house? John, you idiot. Monsters don't exist. You're probably, those footprints and stuff you saw, you're probably just imagining it. Th this is probably just like all a misunderstanding and it's your dad playing a prank on you because monsters aren't real. And John's like, yeah, you know what? You're probably right. And Dave's like, no, are you a fucking moron? You're in a nightmare dimension and you have footprints around your house. Monsters are obviously real. Have you never watched a horror movie before? And John's like, oh. Uh, and then this monster comes out of his bed and then they fight each other. And then the monster uh, beats him up and he cries. <laughs> so you may be asking yourself, why do these monsters exist? What is this whole thing? And how does this create a universe? And we'll talk about that right now. So there's, uh, so first of all, a little geography. This is, this is the layout of the game session. You got four planets for all the people who come in, right? When they enter a game, it creates a planet. All the planets rotate around this giant, bigger planet that's kind of like the sun, called Skya, aka the battlefield. There's a lot of sky and it's blue. Skya. It also sounds like Gaia. Don't worry about it. Th you've got this thing over here called Prospit, which is like a yellow planet, and Durs, which is a purple planet. Bear with me. And out here you've got the furthest ring that has literal HP Lovecraft monsters living in it. How did anyone understand Homestuck? Like, I'm, I'm explaining this to you guys, and I'm just, I'm constantly baffled by the amount of nonsense I'm spewing. Uh, so that's what, uh, so this is what happens. Uh, the, this is a, th we are outside of time, by the way. Don't ask. We exist in a place outside of time right now um, called the medium that has time inside it. Don't, th don't think. Don't use your brain. This is Homestuck. Uh... In every game session that will eventually create a universe, there are two fighting armies of light and dark. Uh, uh, white pieces and black pieces. Yeah, those kind of black pieces. We're going there. Uh, I, and it's, it, This is going on YouTube, baby. That's quote me saying that forever. There are no less than two people rubbing their faces and just like, oh my god. Uh, so, uh, like, these guys are just here to as like game constructs think of them as like npcs but they're people that's a horrible way of thinking about people but that's true they're created by the game so that they they can fight each other like white and black pieces on a chessboard and skaya is the chessboard it's literally checkered on the planet just trust me on this um and and ugh. So this creates a new universe because you have to have something to fight. So it creates NPCs in the game, these imps, that you guys can fight. And uh, it's, do you guys want to break? Like, you guys are just falling asleep over here. And I don't feel like I'm doing it justice. There's so much. There's so much. I, I, think, I think Homestuck might be actually too complicated for me to cover. Yeah. I feel like it's a visual, it's a comic, right? Yeah. It's a visual thing, so obviously it's meant to be seen visually. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you can't really show so-and-so justice if you just talk about it. It's true. You have to see it. Oh. Big brain. Oh. It's true. Much like most things in my life, this is a premise flawed from the start that could have been easily solved by sharing this idea with other people first. Uh, I'd be more I think, I think we stole this night from you, Chris, and I'm sorry. Yeah, we, I think so, too. I think if we had started this earlier, it would have been a smash hit, and I'm sorry for that. Ah, uh, it happens. I mean, when it comes to Homestuck, I don't really care one way or the other. The only lecture that, like, was a lecture. That's true. The air horn was really funny. But I was, it was also boring. Like... I had I some zingers. From, like, the I, important stuff. You like, think? I, I well, because like you're you're getting into the nitty gritty of these mechanics, and like I, they're important to you because you have the big picture. Yeah. But, like, oh. I think we had the big picture. That's before, true. Like, it's because like I'm, I'm not sure like what this is going up to or like where this is going. 
Right, and it makes, and and like when you read Homestuck, it make it, you keep going because you have that moment to moment basis. But the, it, like with this happening, this is the completed board, by the way. Enjoy. Uh, uh, oh, I know. Sorry. Well, you need the big picture, and. Uh, What is Homestuck to me? This is Homestuck to me. I got into Homestuck back in 2011, right? And I had a very good reason. I liked a cute girl who liked it. Oh, okay. It's true. I didn't, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I, I didn't know that's why you liked Homestuck. Uh, that's why I got into it in the first place. And then Homestuck consumed my life. Wait. Thank you, Coco. I do have a question. Yes, go on. Who's the girl that you liked? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to fucking disclose <laughs> that. It also doesn't matter. Jason, who knows what I'm talking about, can confirm. It does not matter. Uh, well, at least you are... I'll tell you off camera. How's that? So why, do you, why do you like Homestuck so much? Like, why do I like why, Homestuck? Why, is it why, why does it go beyond this world? Right. It's kind of like, in a weird way, it's difficult to vocalize. Kind of like Death Grips or Dark Souls. And instead of like... I, 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 I haven't really prepared to talk for that unfortunately because i feel like that's a talk i could do justice and would be a lot less complicated than trying to explain it using visual aids uh but i liked homestuck because it was really funny and it made me laugh which is something completely absent from this lecture uh just like the the fun of reading the comic in sequence and all of the goofy crazy shit that happens I should have done on Problem Sleuth, which is his earlier comic. That would have been a great lecture. And I could still make the board. Man. Uh, anyway, that's kind of what I got into with that. Is it the same way that Seth kind of described the, the uh, Death Grips experience, you know, the art that a layman has? I'd be interested to see the Homestuck experience if there was. I, I imagine, based on, because I know that comic, on the red screen is based on like how you feel when you like check in there's no update right absolutely this is me giving this lecture right now <laughs> no, yes. you're, um, you're fine you're fine too um i just mean like um Yeah, okay. And I imagine that a reason that could work was the format of this, where updates were sporadic and unpredictable, and people were fucking frothing at the mouth for updates. Uh -huh. People probably <laughs> just kept rereading over and over and over again to the point where he could bring up obscure references. Making him a lot of money in the process. Yeah, he could bring up obscure references, I assume, yep. and people would get it, or at the very least, people would get it and then post about it and people would read it. People even today are discovering new shit about that in Homestuck. The Reddit is filled with every once in a while there will be somebody who will be like, hey, remember this panel where this character says this? And, and like, and given the whole context of Homestuck, you're just like, oh, yeah. People do that today. It's been over for th three years. Wait, is done? Homestuck is done. Yes, another good question. Is Homestuck done? Done. Finished. There's That's what the video game is. That's what Hive Swap is. Uh, it's a if you like puzzle games, High Swap is a very good game. It is a charming story. There's almost no puzzles to it. It really is just an interactive story, with wearing the clothes of like a point and click adventure game. It's it's just a story. Is it a good story? Yes, it's very good. Uh, let me. We're off the books now. All right, we're off the books. I can't use my klaxon. I I, I don't. I had all of these gas masks. There was. <laughs> So there was going to be a point in the lecture where I talk about Jade, and Jade uh, is a furry, and I was going to say furry, whoa, and then I would be like, I would start distributing these gas masks to people, <laughs> and I've got like, let me put this on camera, I've got like a Russian World Jesus War II Christ. novelty one. That's one from Evangeline? Yeah, I've got my favorite that I would wear. Yeah, this is, so, exactly. Uh, I didn't have enough gas masks for every people, so I'd be like, all right, two of you guys have to share, and I'd be like a shitty teacher, and, and I'd be like... Uh, two of you have to share the gas mask and then I would start talking about like more furries with like this constantly by my side and then I would casually mention trolls and I'd be like alright gas mask on 
And then I would pull out this can of disinfectant spray, which I picked up at the reuse store too. And I would just constantly just spray this in the air for like 10 seconds and be like, all right, we're clean. Yeah, it would be. But it, it, again, like there's too much to get through. It's more funny to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> I honestly, think you avoid the you, I think you just that's avoid true. Like, the themes of Homestuck. Like, like a sales pitch. That's exactly what I should have done. Yeah, I really got. Yeah, and by mostly I mean completely. <laughs> no, you're. You had shit. You had shit to look at though. That was cool. Don, you had the most successful presentation out of all of us. Thank you. Like, uh, like, I kind of just wanted to make a bunch of shitty jokes rather than talk about Stuart Little because no one actually cares about the plot of Stuart Little. I just think it's funny that he's actually a little human boy that looks like a rat. <laughs> yeah, that's so yeah, that's insane. It was in the Wikipedia.